Stanford wearing the all black jerseys to get things going here. In the opening round, San Jose State on the other side in the all whites and we're underway here at Kagan. Working it back is Stanford. Activity on the near side. Williams with a ton of speed. Rubenstein works it back. The thing about Stanford is they're a very balanced team. Great offensive scoring team as well as great defense. And balance throughout the roster as well with upperclassmen leadership and a lot of freshman talent. Far side, bit of a scuffle. Cross. Pagador on the far side. Working it back is Stanford once again. Paige Rubenstein. Stanford not afraid to work off the back line when organizing their attacks. On the Stanford side, working the near side this time. Williams. And it's out. It'll be a throw in for the Cardinal. A couple of headers. See the Stanford defense kicking into gear here. Giannisella with the cross. Missed opportunity for a shot. Stanford recovers. Hear the crowd audibly nervous. Stanford fans, but Stanford now in control of the play. Back over to Sammy Williams. In the penalty area. Spartan defense kicks into gear now. It'll be another throw in for Stanford. As I mentioned earlier, five Spartans made the All Mountain West team. Jada Wilson was the Defensive Player of the Year and on the first team, as that's into the penalty area and kicked out. In addition to that, Bente Perno was a newcomer of the year, made second team. Bella Flocini and Sabrina Weinman made second team, and Tatiana Cunningham made the all-newcomer team for the Mountain West. They were picked eighth in the preseason poll out of 12 teams in the Mountain West. Surprised everybody, became co-champions again with Wyoming and New Mexico, but able to beat both teams in the Mountain West tournament. Williams on the near side. The giveaway. Stanford on the other hand, seven all Pac-12 honors. Elise Evans, freshman of the year, also first team and freshman team honors for her. Maya Doms made the first team, four-time all-conference for her. Kennedy Wesley, two-time all-conference. 
made the second team. Ryan Campbell, the third. Jasmine Ike, second team, and the freshman team. And Lumi Kostmeyer, second team and freshman team as well. So San Jose State putting up a battle here against Stanford. Trying to put pressure on early. Working down the far side is the Cardinal. Possible breakaway. Shot hits off the goal post. What a close call. Jasmine Ike. Corner kick, Stanford, number 12, Jasmine Ike. And that will create the corner kick here for Stanford. What an opportunity the Cardinal had there. The header from San Jose State. Trying to get out of the penalty area, and they do. Soars down the field. Keeping it inbounds. Okay, we're working it back, back to back headers. Paige Rubenstein working it back to Avani Brandt. Midfield. On to left, down the wing. Still in the penalty area. Once again, down on the Stanford side. So all the way back to Campbell, passes it off to Tatiana Cunningham. Strong kick. A lot of distance there. Stanford in the midfield. Williams here on the right side. Going one-on-one -on, -one on the defender, the cross. That goes wide. And Williams, one of the speediest players on this Stanford team. Williams comes in with seven goals on the season, as well as five assists for a total of 19 points. That shot goes way over. One thing about Stanford is typically they are out shooting their opponents by a large margin. They have 20 plus shots in most of their games this season while keeping opponents to under 10 in all but five. They've lost the shot battle only twice this season against UCLA and Cal. They're throw in. Stanford continuing to work back. Rubenstein finds Williams. Ball gets away. Maybe a throw in for San Jose State. Wasn't able to connect with Williams there with San Jose State. Trying to work it out of their end. It's 
Stanford looking to get some momentum going. And I mentioned how balanced this team really is this year. There, there will be starters, two to three freshmen at any given time, along with a couple of fifth years in Grubel and Angie, who are captains for this Stanford squad. And Williams, the cross, defended successfully by San Jose State. All the way back out to Brandt. She goes to midfield to Wesley. Goes to the far side. Turn on the speed on the far side on the left wing. The cross. A little bit crossed up there is Stanford. Recovering, Williams has it. Into the penalty area. Shot is wide left by Leontini. So you can see some of that aggressiveness Stanford. from Stanford. They're going to constantly take their shots if they can. Again, 20 plus shots in all but eight matches. The corner kick. Long, strong. Kick across the 18. Played in the six, but denied. Brant. Out to Rubenstein. She'll cross. Another opportunity for Stanford. But cannot be handled. Stanford came in, one of the best scoring offenses in the nation. 51 total goals, which is seventh in the nation, second in the Pac-12. They average 10.65 shots on goal per game, which leads it. 2.55 goals per match, which is ninth nationally, second in the Pac-12. And 22.85 shots per game, also second nationally. And Williams with the footwork. So back out to the midfield, working it back. Brant. Less than 33 minutes left here in the first half. Leontini. Up in the air, the header. No success as San Jose State wastes it. San Jose State defense knew they had to come to play today. Look at that move. Oh, blocked. The save. Bente Perno, the newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, showing what she can do and what she's brought to this team all season. Williams out to the right. Again, across. Oh, the. Shot over the goal, another opportunity. Another shot that Stanford takes, but cannot connect with the net. Perno having to be on her toes back there. She had two saves in PKs in that Mountain West Tournament Championship. The shootout with Wyoming, she had four total in that game. She's the first freshman since 2015 to get the Mountain West Tournament MVP honoree.
on the far side. Cardinal working back once again. Over to midfield by Brandt. The right side. That ball goes out off of San Jose State. Off of Evan House. Here's some let's go Stanford cheers. Slowly getting louder and louder here at Kagan. Home field advantage is real when it comes to Stanford women's soccer. Looking for their 100th win here at Kagan since the start of the 2014 season. Back out to Brant. Out to Wesley. Pagador back to Wesley. Over to Brant. Brant over to Williams. Cross. Oh. Unable to find anyone. Battle in the corner here on the right. Into the penalty area. Once again, San Jose State clears it out. Wesley in midfield, back over to Brandt. Cardinal hosting San Jose State in this round. This is the 21st time they have hosted the first round of the NCAA tournament. 13 years straight from 2007 to 2019. Throw in for the Cardinal. Stanford won outright sole possession of the Pac-12 championship less than a week ago in Berkeley, securing the tie after USC upset number one UCLA. They were picked first in the preseason seven times in eight seasons that that has happened and 14 out of the last 25 years. Corner kick, Stanford number 12, Jasmine Ike. Stanford with the corner kick. Cross off the hands of Pernil. Again, another cross. No dice. Stanford continues to threaten, but the San Jose State defense continues to hold up. Stanford's able to capitalize on set pieces quite often. That's going to be key for them moving forward. San Jose State fighting on defense quite a bit. But looking to get something going offensively here as it's worked back to Perno. Strong kick downfield. Stanford trying to gain control. The 
The fifth-year Angie getting tangled up. Some good defense there by San Jose State. And three captains for this Stanford team are Doms, Wesley, and Angie. A lot of leadership. Angie's been a captain for two years here for Stanford. Brant. Out to Rubenstein. Williams. The cross. Stanford recovered by Parnell. She has seen a lot of action tonight already. Bente Perno, the freshman from the Netherlands, has been a huge asset for the San Jose State team. She comes out to get it. She's also earned Mountain West Freshman of the Week honors twice on September 26th and October 17th. Led the Mountain West with .723 goals against average and was second in the Mountain West with an 839 save percentage. Had five solo shutouts and one combo shutout. Sliding. She's had four plus saves in five conference matches. That's got to be something that helps San Jose State, too, in terms of confidence, knowing they're going up against such a potent Stanford offense when you have Bente Perneau behind you and have that foundation to work off of. It makes you feel a little bit better. Rubenstein on the right side. We're going to back to Brant in the midfield. Wesley. Back to the center to Brandt. Over to Williams on the right. Into the penalty area. The cross. But no connection. Once again, she's looking for Abby Grubel. Under 22 minutes left here in the first half. As that ball goes out. It's another throw in for Stanford. In for Stanford, number 33, Lumi Kostmeyer. Lumi Kostmeyer. The freshman. She was six in the Pac-12 in goals. Leads this team with 10 on the season. Averages. 0.5 goals per game, which was ninth in the Pac-12. This is exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the balance of Stanford's team. You have a freshman like Kostmeyer leading the way in terms of goals, but then you have the stability of Abby Grubel and Sierra Angie. And Grubel having played five seasons here at Stanford, including winning that national championship her sophomore year back in 2019. And that's invaluable to know what it takes to have that success when you need it the most, when it's crunch time in the postseason. This is a Stanford program that understands exactly what that's like. Overall, their record in the postseason is 64, 23, and 7 in 30 NCAA appearances. And they've reached the second round 23 of those 30 times. 
of Pagador. Dom's had a chance. A little back and forth. San Jose State. Shalu Inez gets it out of there. So eight shots for Stanford so far in this match. Four saves for Perrineau in San Jose State. That just shows you where the action has been so far in this match. Dom's playing some solid defense. She's just an excellent two-way player. We mentioned how she's a four-time all-conference honoree in the Pac-12. First-team honoree this season. In the midfield. Making progress. Stanford looking to take advantage and seal the deal on one of these opportunities. Another save for Bente Perrineau. Make it five. Take a look at this one more time. Look at the footwork by Kossmeyer and the diving effort by Perrineau. In the corner kick. The call. Let's go, 14! Go San Jose State's way. Kossmeyer doing a great job of putting pressure on. Stanford is very good at that, but Kossmeyer excellent at just making her presence known when she comes into the game. The leading scorer for the Stanford team, not even in the starting lineup, but she comes in and it's just an absolute weapon. And San Jose State knows that they need to be ready. Doms in the middle. San Jose State trying to get it out of their end. Working it back a little bit. Stanford taking control. Speed of Kossmeyer as Perrineau gets it out of there. In for Stanford, number 11. You really can't Matthew overstate Wilson. the impact that Bente Perno has had for this San Jose State team all season long, but tonight it's coming together here in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. She's also the first freshman goalkeeper in Mountain West history to be named Newcomer of the Year and Tournament MVP in the same season. We mentioned San Jose State shares the regular season title with Wyoming and New Mexico, and they all had 20 points. But this is the first time that the Spartans have been able to clinch the regular season since 2017. There's another opportunity for the Cardinal. They keep creating opportunity. Now it's about when can they seize it? When can they seal the deal, connect? And it's just a matter of time when you continue to put pressure. That is double digit sh shots for the Cardinal now so far tonight. Williams. 
Stanford with the throw in. Right, and Kossmeyer back out to Williams. On the right side. Tries to cross. Denied by the San Jose State defense. Brandt putting some pressure on. Shot! It's a goal! And the Stanford Cardinal strike first! 11th shot of the game. First goal for Stanford. And the Cardinal fans are eating it up here at Kagan Stadium. Look at that location. Perno has been working hard all night long. And this time the Cardinal connect. So Jasmine Ike gets on the board for the Cardinal. They now lead one to nothing. Less than 15 minutes here in the first half. So Stanford chipped away. Finally figured it out, but San Jose State now trying to put some offensive pressure on the Cardinal. Evan House back to Perneau. Kossmeyer right there in the penalty area. So for Stanford, 52nd goal for the team as a whole this season. For Ike, that is her sixth putting her third on the team behind Samantha Williams and Lumi Kossmeyer. Brandt plays it forward. Another opportunity here for Stanford Williams. The far side in the left corner. Works it back out. Played in. Perno cuts it off. So again, Stanford used to seeing 20 plus shots in a game at any given time. 11 so far tonight. Zero on the board for San Jose State so far. So in terms of pressure, it's been all Cardinals so far. Back in the midfield. Brandt over to Wesley. Looking for Pagador. It's going to go out on the far side. So in terms of scoring, the Cardinal know how to share the love. 13 different Cardinal have scored a goal in 20 matches. Kossmeyer, Williams, Ike, Grubel, Montoya, Sayer, Doms, Evans, Leontini, Paulson. And the reserves have actually produced 18 out of 52 of those goals. More pressure from Stanford, tripped up. And that is a yellow card. Just looking at the replay State, here. Number 20, Jenna Loggins. Jenna Loggins from San Jose State earns the yellow card. So another opportunity for Stanford. This is going to be Doms, Maya Doms. 
taking this penalty kick. Doms with three goals on the season. The senior looking to capitalize on this opportunity. Wants to make sure it is just right. That's one of the more Stanford things I've ever seen. So detail oriented. Such academic perfectionist mindsets here on the farm. Doms. And it's in! Maya Doms makes it two to nothing Cardinal. Number 10, Maya Doms. Once again, Stanford capitalizing on an opportunity. The senior out of Davis, California strikes it rich. And the thing about Stanford is when you give up goals, not just one, but two, it is incredibly hard to work back from that. Stanford did not allow a goal for over 572 minutes from their match against number two Washington State up until the tie and the draw against Cal last week. That is nearly a month without allowing a goal. Stanford's unbeaten streak currently at 10. They are looking for number 11 as they continue to be in control. So Stanford appears to be connecting well. They feel like they're in a good rhythm. Down the right side. Attempting the cross, but a little bit of a tussle. Corner kick, Stanford, number 14. Another Julia corner kick Leontini. for Stanford. About a half a dozen so far in this match. Rubenstein. Back to Rubenstein. Cross into the penalty area and it's headed out. So two nothing Stanford here. Stanford, Just over 16, 10 minutes left in the first half. And Katie Duong, the senior out of Portland, Oregon, entering the game. Wesley over to Brant. A little back and forth action. On the far side. Once again, working it back. Rubenstein. There's Duong. Theontini. Back over to the near side. Rubenstein. On the right wing, opportunity just misses wide left. Logan Smith 
just missed that opportunity. The freshman out of Boise, Idaho. The cross. Brant. <laughs> Through the legs of Doms. Doms covering territory back and forth. That's hit out on the far side. Pagador throwing it in. So a foul is called. San Jose State really wanting to fire up the offensive engines. With seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Stanford has been in strong control. Doms. Great pass on the left side. It's off the side of the net. Wow, Catherine Paulson just missed that one. Take another look. The left foot. Stanford, number six, Katie Duong. So Duong with the corner kick. Another opportunity for Stanford. Seven so far in this match. A lot of bodies packed together right by the net, the corner kick. Spartans get it out of there. Brant looking to work back. Hits it in the middle. And past the end line. One thing that San Jose State talks a lot about, though, is not playing the name game. Knowing what a match like this means, but also just going out and being yourself. Pair no, the punch. Ball comes back in just wide of the goal post. In for San Jose State, number eight, Julianne Laurent. San Jose State coach. Tina Estrada talked about loving the fight of this group all season long. And there's been a little bit of redemption that they've been able to get for themselves. You know, they beat Wyoming and New Mexico in the Mountain West Tournament after having lost to Wyoming 2-1 to one back on October 23rd and tying New Mexico 1-1 one one on October 9th. And they came back and came on top when it mattered when the pressure was on. So there's a lot of fight in this Spartan group. So Stanford going to continue to just be relentless. The postseason is not a time to sit back and relax. The cross. Foul called. Last year, the Spartans lost their last game to Fresno State 3-1. to one. Did not go to the NCAA tournament this year. Actually clinched their share of the regular season title with a win one to nothing against Fresno State. Action on the far side.
Cardinals still up two to nothing. Trickles down about three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Spartan that has potentially gotten the most action so far in this game is Bente Perno. Mountain West Newcomer of the Year, two-time Freshman of the Week this season. Stanford in control, working back. Brant. Out to Smith on the near side. Back to Rubenstein. Across out to Wesley. Stanford very comfortable. Working on their back line. Played through. Foot race with Duong. And it goes out. Another throw in for Stanford. Stanford again, top 10 team in the country, ranked number seven nationally currently. They played three ranked teams this year, then number eight Penn State, number 21 Washington State, and number one UCLA, three and oh against ranked teams. San Jose State played just the one ranked team in Santa Clara. They lost one to nothing back on August 18th. Another Bay Area rival here in the women's soccer world and head coach Tina Estrada's alma mater. These programs here in the Bay Area, very familiar with each other. Pagador. Back to Brant once again. Leontini, down the right side over to There's Rubenstein. Remaining in the first half. Less than a minute here in the first half. Across, playing it in. San Jose State clears it out. Doms over to Wesley. Out to Pagador. Ten, There's 10 seconds nine, left here in the first eight. half. And a foul was called, so you know, a few times that the running clock stops with eight seconds left. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's going to do it for the first half here at Kagan Stadium. Stanford gets two goals by Maya Doms and Jasmine Eichen. They lead two to nothing as we head to the halftime.
Well, welcome back to Kagan Stadium in Palo Alto, California. It is the opening round of the NCAA tournament. The Stanford Cardinal leads San Jose State two to nothing. First goal scored by Jasmine Ike, Ike in the 31st minute, her sixth on the season assist by Pagador. Then just a few minutes later in the 34th minute, Maya Doms found the back of the net on the penalty kick. And just like that, there are two on the side of Stanford. The Cardinal have 14 shots so far in this game. San Jose State has none so far. However, the goalkeeper, Bente Perno, has six saves on the night. So far, control has been dominated by Stanford. So San Jose State looking to make some adjustments here in the second half to put a little bit more offensive pressure as they have been fighting hard defensively. Some falls, and it looks like the call is it will be San Jose State's ball. Barely started the second half, and you can just see some of the physicality from both teams. Because this is it. This is postseason. You're not saving anything in the tank for anything later. You know, it is do or die win in advance, or you go home. Stanford knows exactly what it means to win in advance. They have found themselves in this position in the NCAA tournament 30 times before. And head coach Paul Ratcliffe In his 20th season, he is the most successful Stanford soccer coach ever, men's or women's. And the men's team, just for reference here at Stanford, started back in 1911 compared to the women's team in 1984. And under him, they have three national championships, five NCAA finals, 10 Pac-12 titles, nine college cups, and they've made the third round of the NCAA tournament 13 of the past 16 seasons. So it is just success after success. The standards are extremely high here on the farm. And when it comes to individual recognition, six Herman trophies in the last 13 seasons as well. So the history of Stanford is here and the foundation. That's in the middle. battling is Tatiana Cunningham there in the middle out to the left side the cross the one-handed push from Bente Perno Stanford continues to put pressure on this San Jose State defense In the first half, all the action felt like it was on the right side of the field here in the second so far. A lot of it on the left. Now Brant on the far side. Grubel. Footwork shot, the save, but the header and the rebound in there for goal number three. That is a goal cardinal. Jasmine Ike does it again. Little deja vu this time with the header. Check this out. The block, the save by Pirano. Oh, just kidding. Jasmine Ike gets it done. Wow. Stanford has really warmed up in this match. Took them about 30 minutes of continuing to put pressure on, and now they have found that rhythm. Great spatial awareness, paying attention. 
Heike, her seventh goal on the season. So Wesley, back to Brandt. Back by their own 18. Pagador to Wesley to Brandt. Really are, are, are 54 goals this season for the Cardinal. Well, back, to back to Campbell, who has not seen a lot of action so far in this game. 17 shots for Stanford, still none for San Jose State. Pagador plays it through, plays it forward. Clearing it and knocking it out is Jada Wilson. The Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. Been having to go to work tonight. Doms. Back to Brandt. A lot of teams in a lot of different sports use the phrasing, all gas, no breaks. And that's the approach that they want to take in any given game, match, contest, meet, whatever it is. But Stanford has really personified what that approach looks like in this match. On the far side, Williams, the shot. It's in! The onslaught continues. And that's a hat trick from Jasmine Ike. Look at how Williams sets this up. Ike knocks it in like it's no problem. 4 nothing, Cardinal. Have yourself a night, Jasmine Ike. I wonder what she had for breakfast. I wonder what she had for lunch and dinner because she should eat the same thing throughout the rest of this postseason. Wow. The freshman, Palo Alto native. She's had some honors throughout this season so far. Offensive Player of the Week for the Pac-12 back on October 24th. Team of the Week for Top Drawer Soccer, College Soccer News. She had another hat trick at Oregon State on October 23rd. And she's been absolutely outstanding. Perno is beat! It's wide open! Again! And Stanford finds the back of the net. Five nothing Cardinal. Jasmine Ike. Wow. Four goals for the freshman. This is absolutely unheard of. We talked about the Player of the Week honors that she received no this year. No She's earned some more tonight, but they actually, on further review, it has been called a no goal. So the officials have taken that away and it's still four to nothing Stanford. Still just a hat trick for Jasmine Ike. I guess that'll do. So still 4 nothing. Perno Gets things going here. There are just 39 minutes left here in the second half. A very busy first six minutes it's been. Action in the midfield. Through ball, Ike, can she do it again? She does! Are you kidding me? 
They told her no on the last one, so she said, watch me do it again. Wow. Finds the back of the net. And it is just an onslaught from Jasmine Ike. Once again, 5 nothing Cardinal. Stanford fans are on their feet. A little bit of a small standing ovation there for the performance so far by Jasmine Ike. Hometown kid, do it in front of your family and friends. Does it get any better than that? Number five, Natalia Nava, and number six, Kayla Fortenberry. Natalia Nava and Kayla Fortenberry come in for San Jose State. They are trailing five to nothing. Early on here in the second half. Doms. Over to Grubel. Works it to the far side. Some traffic. Grubel. Took a shot. Perno saves it, sailing way over the goal. An opportunity for Stanford did not capitalize. They have quite the cushion. Number six, Katie DeLong, and number 23, five, Naya Neil. Harrison. Naya Harrison comes into the game for Stanford. Thirty-seven and a half minutes left here in the second half. And there's the speed of Williams or Pagadar, excuse me. A bit of a scuffle. Duong finds herself on the ground. Stanford regaining control. Far side, working it back once again. Stanford sees success on having this precision and planning out their attacks in a very disciplined manner. Being able to make adjustments but remaining in control. Takeaway. First shot. First action really that Ryan Campbell has seen. Hit for Stanford. Number 28, Logan Smith. Stanford has now hit 20 shots in this game. You think, hey, it might take a little bit of pressure off of Ryan Campbell back there, the junior goalkeeper out of Laguna Beach, California, third team all Pac-12. She was goalkeeper of the week for the Pac-12 three times, national player of the week. Hasn't had to do a whole lot. Back in the penalty area, over to Pagador. Grubel. Back to Wesley. Stanford able to take their time a little bit here and really be intentional. Over the top, Perrineau comes out. Natalia Nava in the middle.
and it's out on the far side. Throw in for Stanford. Work in the middle is San Jose State. Moving it forward. That is cleared by Harrison. And throw in for San Jose State. So Perno moves it back in the middle. The foul was called. It is Tatiana Cunningham. Fell, so a set piece here for the Spartans. Wide past the end line. And what we've seen so far is 33 minutes left here in the second half. This is the kind of relentless dominance and just Bailey effort and Wayne. aggression in for Stanford, that Paul Ratcliffe 11, Catherine Paulson, really pushes and, and preaches with his team Sarah to not Paulson. take your foot off the gas. And Haley Craig comes in at goalkeeper, the sophomore out of Dexter, Michigan, in for Ryan Campbell. Ratcliffe has been a nine-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year, and there's no one else that has won more than twice for context. Three-time National Coach of the Year. He's also been, in addition to the winningest soccer coach ever at Stanford Men's or Women's, the most successful in the postseason, 53-13-4. and four. Had 30 consecutive matches without a loss at home between 2008 and 2016. Over the top, pushing the tempo. The save by Perno again, and it's in there. Another goal for Stanford. Make it number six. And Kossmeyer with the attempt. And the rebound. Logan Smith puts it away. Six nil Stanford. Logan Smith, the freshman out of Boise, Idaho, taking advantage of her opportunities and her minutes played tonight. Under 32 minutes left here in the second half. More push from Stanford. Out to, to Paulson. In the middle, Spartans clear it. The cross, attempt. San Jose State defense hangs on. And Stanford recovering, looking to attack once more. Ooh, side of the head there. Another shot, but Perrineau handles it. All six goals for Stanford have been scored in the last 15 minutes 
of the first half. And the first 15 minutes of the second. Cunningham to Wilson. Phillips. Phillips. And it goes off Catherine Paulson. And for San Jose State, number eight, Juliana Laurent. So San Jose State Henry coming in, Julianne Laurent. Senior from France makes her way in, as well as Alexis Jackson. Shalu Inez with the throw in. Ref calls a foul. So, less than 29 minutes left here in the second half. This is Julianne Laurent. Looking at the set piece here for the Spartans. In the middle. Cleared out by Stanford. Laying it forward. That is Sarah Paulson. And Catherine Paulson, the twins, both on the field. That's cleared all the way out on the far side. House with the throw in. I think if you're San Jose State at this point, you're still just trying to chip away. You can't really worry about the scoreboard. You just have to try to do the next right thing and do deal with what's in front of you. You know, the one thing that you want to do is finish strong. And it's tough because it's it would be extremely difficult to come back in general when you're down by six goals. But to do it against the number seven team in Stanford and a top 10 team in general would be extremely difficult. So really you wanna put up a good fight. You wanna be able to say that at one point you played San Jose State soccer. Astrid Wheeler comes in for Stanford. Sarah Paulson. Back to Wesley. Sarah to Catherine. Now in the middle. Laurent. Pushing forward on the right wing. And that's Brant in the corner. And it's going to go out on the near side. So Craig waiting in goal for anything that comes her way. Wesley. And there's Craig. Over to Brant. On the far side. And just looking at the freshman talent on this Stanford team. Even just the goals scored tonight 
between Jasmine Ike with her four and Logan Smith. Five goals have come from freshmen. The future looks bright for Stanford. They have a lot of talent as well in the upperclassmen like Maya Doms, Angie, some of the fifth years, Grubel. But the future also looks incredibly bright. They also recently announced, at least officially, have announced four signees who have decided to come to the farm. And the shot and the save by Craig. So Campbell didn't get the action, but Craig does. And she handles business. And I give it to San Jose State for taking a shot. They've only had a couple of shots in this entire match. So to keep pushing at this point when there are less than 25 minutes left, you have to give credit where credit's due. And they should continue pushing. And if you're Stanford, in a lot of ways, you, you still want them to keep pushing and keep pushing you. Yes, yeah, some subs have come in to get some playing time, but what's going to prepare you for postseason is the constant battle. And the more people that get to have those types of battles in this kind of environment, the more ready you're going to be the further you go in the bracket. Again, not the time to take any minutes off in the postseason. It's all on the line. Kossmeyer in a tussle. All the way back to Perno. Perno, 10 saves in this match. You look at the six goals, but you consider the 23 shots as well from Stanford. A lot of pressure offensively. Stanford works it back to reset a bit here. Wesley to Sarah Paulson. What Tina Estrada has done with this team for San Jose State this year has been very impressive. As Stanford pushing, shot, cleared. San Jose State defense stepping up to help out Perneau. In the middle, another shot, another save. Make it two. And Pirno just scrambles it in time. Stanford was on the verge of goal number seven. But Pirno heads up and taking control. She's been a bright spot. Head coach Tina Estrada has been a bright spot for San Jose State this season. Former head coach Lauren Hansen resigned back in February. She was a two-time Mountain West Coach of the Year, winningest coach in program history. Spent eight seasons at San Jose State. And Tina Estrada had been with the program for five seasons on staff, the last couple being as an associate head coach. Took the interim head coaching position for a couple of months before they decided, nope, the job is yours. And what she's been able to lead this team to do after a tough 2021 season, again, didn't make the tournament, Lost their last game to Fresno State. Then they come back this year. They're co-champions for the regular season in the Mountain West, Mountain West Tournament champions. Making it back to the postseason. She's the first head coach at San Jose State to go to the NCAA tournament in her first season since the year 2000. In the first head coach to win the Mountain West regular season championship in the first year in Spartan history. And for San Jose State, number seven, Taylor Phillips. So what number Tina 10, Estrada has Sabrina been able to Whiteman. do with this team number 11, Bella has Lokini. been huge. And, and we talk about how Stanford has a bright future. But so does San Jose State. 
lots of words of praise for Tina Estrada as well when she took the job, including from Brandi Chastain, two-time U.S. Olympic gold medalist and FIFA World Cup champion. She just said she's an excellent mentor. She continues to learn. She gives back. Loved her when she played, and she has that leadership quality to make others around her better. So less than 20 minutes left in the second half. Spartans trying to make something happen offensively. Shallow Inez going at it with Paulson. Get some help from Flores in the middle. San Jose State working in the midfield, working back a little bit. The speed of Stanford, though, always a threat. Nava back to Wilson. San Jose State having a hard time connecting and finding that rhythm offensively. Stanford has had a ton of shutouts this season. They look for another one here. But if you're San Jose State, you don't want to go down like that. Coming off of a high with the conference championships. Which, by the way, the regular season Mountain West title was the first since 2017. And the tournament title was the first since 2018 for the Spartans. There's Paulson. Catherine Paulson from the left wing. And the slide from Shalu Inez to stop the momentum. It'll be a corner kick for Stanford. In for Stanford, number seven, Emily Chow, and number 13, Mia Watanabe. And in for Stanford, number seven, Emily Chow, the redshirt junior out of Phoenix, Phoenix Stanford, Arizona. Number six, Katie Duong. And Mia Watanabe, the junior from Hawaii. Getting some time here in the second half. Cross. Cleared out by the Spartans. And it'll be another throw in for Stanford. So in terms of what this bracket looks like here in the postseason, again, mentioned this earlier, but just to recap, in the pod, there's Stanford and San Jose State here, BYU and Utah Valley. The winners play each other. Moving forward from there, in this part of the bracket, UNC plays Old Dominion. The winner of that will play the winner of Samford and Georgia. If UNC wins, they are the highest seed in this pod. They will host the next couple of rounds. So if the next 16 or so minutes continue this way for Stanford, they would be playing in North Carolina next as that sails way over the goal, assuming North Carolina wins. And the College Cup itself this year is in Cary, North Carolina. So Stanford, generally speaking, just hoping to make their way to the East Coast as they get deeper into this postseason run. goes out on the far side. 
So I mentioned that Stanford had recently announced four signees officially. Joel Jung from San Jose, California, midfielder. Mia Buta, the midfielder from Pittsburgh. Alyssa Savig, goalkeeper from Granite Bay, California. And Erica Grillioni, the, the forward from Roseville, California. Meanwhile, San Jose State has also added four signees. Ava Bynes from San Marcos. Hope Northrup from Elk Grove, California, both forwards. A midfielder, Valerie Aguilar from Gilroy. And the defender, Nikayla Sullivan from Centennial, Colorado. And that's way wide. So right now, while the number one priority for every team in the postseason is to play and is to win, in the background, the National Letter of Intent signing day just happened and is continuing in terms of recruiting, so that's in the back of every program's mind. As that's over the top, Kostmeyer! And Perno beats her to it and clears it out. Spartans push it forward, in the midfield is Wesley. Trying to play it forward was Phillips, and goes out on the far side. 13 and a half minutes or so left in this second half. Spartans trying to push the tempo here. It's Flores. The takeaway, but the slide. And she trips up Chow. A little bit of a talking to there with Flores. Tripping up Emily Chow. Side tackle was a little bit late. They're moving on. Chow. Out to Watanabe from the left side. Take away. And she takes it back. The shot on goal. Diving save by Perno by the left goal post. It's Duong, over to Kostmeyer in the middle. Offsides called. Kostmeyer still currently leading this Stanford team in goals, but barely, because Jasmine Eike came in with five, has jumped up to nine with her four goals tonight. So she's second on the team, on the verge of double digits as well. Both of these programs also celebrated Senior day recently. It's in the penalty area. Cleared by Stanford. San Jose State honored Jada Wilson, Maddie Toomer, Natalia Nava, Julianne Laurent, and Al Alexis Jackson on their senior day. That is handled by Craig. 
in senior day for Stanford, you celebrate it because it's your last known home game. This is before the selection show, before you know if you're hosting postseason. So they celebrated it as well. And they honored Madison Eisen, Katie Duong, Maya Doms, Kennedy Wesley, Emily Chow, and Paige Rubenstein. And the thing is on senior day is you get emotional because you're, you're being honored at what was essentially your home, not only for the matches, but just your day-to-day -day life as a college athlete. But you're also hoping to keep playing and maybe even to keep playing there. <laughs> So you have that moment, you allow yourself to have that moment, but then you continue the way Stanford has, especially to keep competing. Took the shot, but Craig, once again, handles it. Less than 10 minutes here left in this match. What an exciting fall for Stanford women's soccer. Coming in with that 16-2-2 overall record, 9-1-1 in Pac-12 play. Also able to honor one of their own, Kristen Press, who played here at Stanford from 2007 to 2010. Went Shot on goal is handled by Pernod. And Kristen Press, many know her. She's an Olympic bronze medalist from the Tokyo Olympics with Team USA. She's World Cup winner. Herman Trophy recipient back in 2010. Player of the Year for Soccer America then. Pac-10 Player of the Year back then and Freshman of the Year. During her time has the record in career points, goals, and shots. 500 shots here at Stanford. Two-time World Cup, by the way, champion. And she was selected in the first round of the draft for the WPS at the time and currently plays for Angel City in the NWSL. She was outstanding. She was honored in the first ever all-female Hall of Fame class for Stanford Athletics, celebrating the anniversary of Title IX. Just in September, is pushing tempo here was Stanford, but San Jose State holds strong. And Stanford has just a long history of producing outstanding talent that go on to perform extremely well in both the international stage as well as in the pros. A couple of NWSL champs in 2022, Tegan McGrady and Sophia Smith for the Portland Thorns this year. among many others. So Stanford throw in on the far side. Corner kick, Stanford. Number six, Corner kick goes to Stanford. Cardinal, just over six minutes left and six goals ahead. The header in the penalty area, Sarah Paulson, knocked out of there by San Jose State. The clock continues to tick down here in this opening round of the NCAA tournament. Stanford still leading six to nothing. 
the four goals from freshman ja Jasmine Ike, freshman Logan Smith with one, and Maya Doms with the PK over the middle header. Skied outside the penalty area. That's going to go out on the near side in the corner. In for San Jose State, number eight, Julianne Laurent. Number 12, Alexis Jackson. Number 14, Tatiana Cunningham. And number 32, Tiana Julianne Sun. Laurent, Alexis Jackson, Tatiana Cunningham. All come in once again for San Jose State. Spartan throw in. Kosmeyer. Sarah Paulson. Looking to set it up, working it back. Wesley has some time. Less than four and a half minutes left. And this is a Stanford team as well that has faced adversity. And you can see renewed fight in them in this season. Kossmeyer sails that one wide right. Earlier this year, they dealt with tremendous loss when they lost their teammate, Katie Meyer. The goalkeeper for Stanford, part of that 2019 national championship team, described by a lot of her teammates as the ultimate competitor. And when they lost her, they, they've since then had a lot of open conversations, listened to each other, been very introspective, focused on their mental health, taking care of themselves, being compassionate with themselves. And in a lot of ways, they're more bonded in ever, than ever through that experience. And they know Katie Meyer was one of the most competitive people out there and in women's soccer. And they know that she would want to go forward and want them to fight and want them to win. And that's exactly what they're doing here this season and in this game for the NCAA tournament. Earlier this season, they had a mental health awareness match as well where they encouraged people to wear green, share positive messages on their wall of wellness. And they got a t-shirt that says mental health matters on the back and that's actually what their warm-up shirts look like before this game and, and most of the season. The Cardinal, just over two minutes away from winning this first round on the road to the College Cup. Forward movement from San Jose State. Stanford able to reset. More momentum from the Cardinal. Tripped up by the Spartan defense. Action on the far side and it rolls out. So just a minute and a half left here. By the way, I mentioned earlier One minute that BYU in and Utah Valley played their game in this opening round earlier today. The Cougars came out on top three to nothing over Utah Valley. They will be advancing.
So Stanford looking at facing BYU. And a little bit of an adjustment that you have to consider because BYU, just generally speaking as an institution, does not play on Sundays. That means their games and matches would potentially be Thursday, Saturday in North Carolina. And the clock is winding down here on this first round of the NCAA tournament. Nine, Ten seconds eight, left. Seven, six, and five, Craig four, three, two, handles one, it, zero, and that's going to do it. The Stanford Cardinal make a huge statement in the first round of the NCAA tournament with the 6 nothing win over San Jose State. The Battle of the Bay goes the Cardinals way as they will move forward and advance to play BYU in the next round.